Sam, welcome back to Book It. Today we are going to be diving into a new series. Oh my God, there's so much on this. Okay, we're gonna be doing the Hunger Games entire series. So I have the entire, like, right here. Um, I do have something cooking right here. I got Hunger Games, I'm hungry. That could be funny. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to be discussing The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. And I'm not going to lie, I love this book. So, since, like, the movie for Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes has, like, came out and everything, I went ahead and reread the entire, like, series. Um, so, like, we're all aware this is, like, the very beginning of the dystopian society, like, book era for everyone. So, like, this with Divergent and, oh my god, was the other one? Maze Runner. Though those were like those were like the times, like I remember being like thirteen or fourteen, and I read these, like started it, and I used to read them with my mom. So like these have a special place in my heart. So basically, this is a book that kind of sets the scene for the entire series. So we learned that there was a big war, and basically annihilated like. A district so now there's only 12 districts and there's the capital and it's all of Panem so basically it's like that's the country of Panem um, and once a year they send uh, kids from the districts ages 12 to 18 two of them from each district one male and one female to fight to the death in a like hunger game like they literally fight to the death in this arena that's like televised for everyone so this is a way, um, this was because there was a war from like a rebellion 70 years prior. So this book takes place at the 74th annual Hunger Games. That's the one that we're like at. So it's been 74 years of this. And um, we meet our main character, Katniss Everdeen. Um, her sister gets, you know, yoinked. So she volunteers because she's like, I don't want, her sister's like 12. And she's 18. So she's like, I'm going to go ahead and take it because it was her last year. So she was like, I'm not going to make my 12 year old sister go. Because basically, uh, what we learn is that you die. Like, everyone dies except one tribute. The problem is, um, districts 1, 2, and 4 are like career districts. Where they are literally like trained. Like, in a special academy. And then they volunteer when they're 18. So, like, basically, they're, they, you don't really stand a chance. Um, <laughs> so they say their goodbyes or whatever. Um, she, her partner is Peter Malark, a boy from District 12. He is, I think he's 16 or 17 in the book. Um, and he is the baker's son from in town. And they have a history where when she was starving, because like, you know, her, she's from a very poor district. They don't make any money. Uh, and her dad died in the coal mining accident where it exploded and killed everyone. Um, so basically, he, um, <laughs> sorry, didn't want to show that, but he gave her bread, so she didn't die. Um, they get on the train, they meet their, you know, their Effie trinket is, like, the, uh, capital token, basically, she, like, introduces them and, like, keeps them in line until the games, and then, um, their mentor is Hamish Abernathy, so he has won his games prior. He won the 50th annual Hunger Games, so he now like mentors everybody in their games uh, from District 12. And then the more tributes that win, the more the more mentors you get. So if you have 10 tributes that won, you get 10 mentors and you get like more advice and stuff like that. But there's only one ever from District 12. Um, and that's Hamish. So, uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. I made a, so I'm not gonna lie to you. These are my notes. Okay, I wanna make sure that you can see all my notes. Cause I made a lot of notes. Okay, here's my notes, ready? Well, I'm not reading all that. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing that. So they go into, you know, training, they do training, they do like a bunch of, oh my God, they do interviews, they do a bunch of stuff like that while they're in the capital. And basically her and PETA have like an alliance or whatever, and then they go into the games. So this is the part where it gets like super crazy, right? So they start going into the games and, um, you know, people are fighting and dying. 
she is like by herself she re she learns that Peta is with the uh career tributes which is the tributes from one two and four she learns that he's with them and she's like great so he's like helping track her down she gets really hurt and when she like passes out basically she wakes up and she learns that rue the little district um 11 girl has like helped her she takes rue kind of under her wing basically keeps rue alive um super cute and then they have a plan to basically blow up everything from the career pack like they're like we're going to take them down we're going to blow everything up so the girl from district one is killed by rue telling katniss to cut down tracker jackers which is a modified version of like a wasp um except that like makes you hallucinate and it kills you um so she's dead so then that leaves just like the boys from one and two and then the girl from two which the girl from two is like the most lethal so basically um she blows up their food supply she comes back she gets rue as she's grabbing rue rue dies to the boy of district one which katniss immediately kills um, instead of, like, leaving Katniss, like, leaving Rue there by herself, Katniss, like, buries her in flowers, sings her a song, um, and she passes away, and the tributes from District 11 rally, like, all their money together and send her, like, a piece of bread, right? Which is, like, super expensive, and, like, District 11 is also very poor, so, like, you kind of know, like, it meant something. Like, she was like, no, it's not okay to kill kids, because she believes that, but she can't tell people that, because, like, She'll get killed by the capital. So she basically like does all this beautiful thing for her. Hold on. Pause. Um, so back to what I was saying. Um, so then she, you know, they end up doing this thing where they're like, you can have two winners from the districts if they're both from the same district. So she immediately goes and finds PETA, who has been cut badly by Cato. Um, which is the guy from District 1 because he helped Katniss escape after he, uh, she killed the girl from District 1. Um, and then this is when they're kind of like hanging out and basically it comes down to like the final people. So the final people are um, both people from District 2, Cato and Clove. Those are boy and girl. Uh, the girl from District 5 who they call Foxface because she doesn't really have a name but she's like very smart and she has red hair so they call her Foxface. Um, Thresh, which is District 11's tribute, and then Peta and Katniss. So it's like the final five. They all need something. So there's like a, um, what's it called? A feast, which is like where they need stuff. So she needs medicine for Peta. So she just, Katniss decides to go. She drugs Peta and she goes. She gets there and she sees Foxface like really grab her stuff and take off. And she's like, I'm going to do the same thing. As she does that, immediately met with, uh, my love, Clove. I'm sorry, Katniss is great, Clove is my girl. Um, so she's met with Clove, the girl from District 2, who um, takes her down and is like about to kill her and mentions like, yeah, we killed your friend Rue. Immediately she's picked up and her head is slammed into a rock, like a rock is slammed into her head so hard there's a dent. And that's from Thresh from District 11 who basically is like, okay, well you sit, you like, you cared for Rue so you and I are even. I'm going to spare your life this one time and you and I are cool. Perfect. So she takes off and then she gets Peta his medicine. He's better. They're hunting in the woods. Peta finds some nightlock berries, which are dangerous. You will die if you eat them. And he goes and basically like yoinks them. And um, this is when the cannon goes off and Katniss sees it. And is like, oh my God, oh my God. He's fine, but Foxface has died. And this is... I'm going to leave that there for a second. So she dies, okay? So the ending comes. It's the final four. Um, there's, like, a scream, a cannon, and then Kato runs right past Katniss and Peeta. And she's like, what the hell? Like, he, like, comes darting out of the woods right past them. And she's like, okay. Basically, um, there was a genetic modified, like, dog wolf thing, which was, like, tore like tears humans apart right and as like Katniss looks at them she's like oh my gosh like there's there's like a there's a blonde one with green eyes with a with a name tag named one there's a red haired one with a name tag that says five she's like oh my gosh these are the tributes like the eyes of the tributes were like in these genetically modified dogs so she notices that, like there's like a tiny little runt that's like brown with a brown eyes with an 11 on it and she's like Oh my God, Rue. So basically the capital effed up people, right? So that happens basically ending, um, you know, 
Kato falls. Um, he's getting torn apart for hours. Finally, she puts a mercy bow and arrow into his head because she's like, the poor guy's been suffering for hours. And then, um, you know, they're like, hey, there can only be one winner. And Peta's like, go ahead and shoot me. And she's like, nah, dude, we're both going to die. LOL. They both uh, try to Romeo and Juliet this shit. Seneca Crane comes on. He's like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. We're all cool. And then they do their final interview about how they're in love or whatever. And, you know, everyone's like freaking out. Peta does have a fake leg in the book. In the movie, he doesn't. But in the book, he has a fake leg. Um, they go home and they learn that the capital is really unhappy with them because of what they pulled off. Um, like the Romeo Juliet. Julia situation and the president knows that it's an act of rebellion he doesn't think that it's okay and he doesn't want to give the um like districts like a hope that it's okay to do this so all right I'm gonna backpedal real quick so one of the controversial topics of this this book is how much Suzanne Collins has really thought out this entire series like you see it throughout all of the books you see how well at how well thought out this entire series was and then this book like ties together perfectly so one of the things that bothered me in this book was Fox Face was known as like one of the most like she's the smartest people right she was intelligent she was quick she was fat like she was fast she was uh very quiet stealthy and she was smart that is how she survived so long, right? Now here's where here's where things get complicated. So in the movie, there is a scene where she is pushing all these buttons and like matching all these things, right? Just to show how smart she is, okay? I have fallen into a hole of why did Fox face die? Which she could have easily outlasted everyone because she was so smart. She stayed hidden the entire one time. Like she did not see a single person. As far as we know, she went into hiding and she was so fast. She was like Katniss Stoller when she was about to shoot all of like the career stuff. Like she was so smart that she like got in and out of like a mind trap, right? That they set up. How is it that these berries that are very well known like killed her? So some people are like, oh no, she didn't know because like District 12, like that's how Katniss knew about it is because District 12 has them, but they don't grow everywhere. And she's from District 5, so maybe she's never seen them before. But my thought process was, if you see like, and I know Peta collected them because he didn't know, but something inside me tells me that Foxface knew that she, that they were poisonous and she ate them on purpose. So my thought process behind it is think of it this way. You're coming down to the final five. You have... Uh, Katniss and Peeta, who are a team, who are like pretty lethal, but they're a team. You have Thresh, who is this humongous guy, and the odds were kind of on him versus Cato. It was like, who are you going to go? Like, big guy, brutal, had his entire, like, he had an entire field, basically. And then you had Cato, who literally would kill anybody because he didn't care. He just wanted the power and glory, right? And then there's you. And you're like, dude, I'm fast, but like, if one of them get a hold of me, it's gonna like, it's gonna suck. I don't want to die that painfully. And you came across these poisonous berries. Why would you not eat them? I think that she realized that she was like, I'm not going to win this, and I don't want to die a horrible, painful death. And the berries, she was in and out in like 30 seconds. Like it was like one, two, three, boom, dead. Like it was like not even. I personally believe that she killed herself on purpose. And I will argue that stance to people. I will argue it because I think I'm right. But it's never confirmed nor divide. I, if I ever meet Suzanne Collins, that's the first thing I want to ask her is, hey, question. Back in book one, you and I need to talk real quick. Um, I'm not going to lie. This is one of my favorite books of all times. I think Suzanne Collins is a literal genius. Um, and then she went to hiding after dropping these bangers. She disappeared and then dropped this banger like 10 years later. So she is... Honestly, personally, I've always loved The Hunger Games. I've always loved these series. I love the theories surrounding it. This is like, you could fall into such a deep web on this. Um, it's just a great book. And honestly, this is probably one of the books that got me into loving reading so much was The Hunger Games series because I read this series and was like, oh my God, it's great. Overall, five out of five, love this book. Um, also, I do wanna touch on real quick, Clove is my favorite character. Why might you ask? Well, first off, Isabel Furman plays her goddess a queen but before that something about her like she like she just she was younger like she was 16 
and she volunteered to go in, which is wild because usually you're 18 and volunteer when you're a career tip group tribute but she had like something to prove like she like went in and she didn't care like she played up the whole like yeah I'll be your ally but like she didn't care she would have killed all of them and in all honesty I think that if Thresh wouldn't have gotten a hold of her I think she would have won the entire thing I think she would have killed Kato I think actually I think she would have had Kato kill Thresh and then she would have turned around and killed Kato and then I think that she would have like murdered everyone else I think she could have actually been the winner if Katniss wasn't like the main character in my opinion, I love Clove. I think she's great. She is the reason that, um, like, I just fell in love with, like, all, like, the side tangents on this book. <coughs> but, yeah, that's it. Hunger Games. Great book. Suzanne Collins, my queen. I love her to death. Um, please make sure you like and subscribe. It helps you out so much more you could possibly think. I'm going to go ahead and upload this to my Goodreads, which you can find my Goodreads in my um, description below. Um, obviously it's going to be a lot longer in my Goodreads because I'm going to like post my entire note section instead of just talking, talking on like just the few. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye! Yay.